Welcome back to another episode of the Hoodie and the Headband Podcast Show. Special National Championship Recap Edition, baby. It's your boy Bryce, and I'm joined by my dog, my brother. You know, I gotta ask you, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Uh, The season is over, so it's kind of kind of bittersweet in a way. Um, but we're only six days removed or six days away from the WNBA draft. And then training camp is a couple weeks after that. Then preseason is a week after that. And then the season starts about a week and a half after that. So, okay. And it's getting to that time where we're in the last week of the NBA season. So the playoffs about to start. I'm stressed about what my Heat are doing. I don't know what, what's going on with them. They Three games, they look like they want to play. Then the, the next two, they don't want to play. Um, but shout out to Magic though they're in the three C right now. Shout out to oh Orlando Magic, Orlando Magic. Now when I said stuff about the Magic early in the season, all right, bro, all right, bro, all right, bro, we get it, bro, we get it, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. We get it, bro. We get it, bro. We get it, bro. Now, now let him have been the one to say this. He would not let nobody live it down. Just letting y'all know that. At the beginning of the season, you was like, "Hey, watch out for the Magic, bro." And then boys end up in the third seed with a week to go in the season, you wouldn't be like, Yeah, yeah, who who said that? Don't okay. care. Anyways, man, moving on, bro. Anyways. Um great season. We're gonna well hope uh, I'm assuming we're gonna talk about some of the things that we enjoyed the most about this women's college basketball season. Um UConn won the Miz National Championship game last night. Talk I to tried, the boys. I tried to watch it. I ain't gonna lie. I cannot lock in. Like, not even a little bit. I would lock in for, like, two or three possessions, and then I'll go back to doing something else. And then no, I watched that game, bro. I, I watched that game. I watched that first half. Amazing. Second half, UConn put the, put the dogs on him. You got something you want to say to uh, Mr. Zach Eady, though? I kind of do. I kind of, I kind of got some. I kind, I kind of got. I don't know. Me and that. I all right. Let 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 us let's, let's put it like this. All right. First and foremost, I'm doing good. All right. Let me get that out there. I'm doing good. Had a good weekend. Weekend was fun. Um. Yeah. But um. No, Zach Eady. Um. I wasn't familiar with his game. He's two times. I know, I know. It took it took two that it took two thousand player of the years for me to realize. I mean, maybe because I wasn't tuned in and tapped in, and I just didn't really see that for Ed because I don't watch Purdue basketball. I don't watch Purdue games. Purdue, come on! I'm not watching Purdue. Why? You said I mean, why? Answer me just one question, then I'm not even gonna say nothing else. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I ain't gotta ask nothing else because it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to know. Okay. Sophomore year, Jay Nivey, did he need to prove anything to you, or did you think he was nice when you saw him? <laughs> oh, man, that's different, bro. That's different. How? Hold on, let me explain how, bro. Damn. That's different. As a guard, you know, you like watching other guards, and you can tell when a guard is nice. Bigs. It takes me a while to realize what a big is nice. I'm being so for real here. I'm being so for real here. And I didn't really hate on Zach Eady as much. I mean, I did in the past say he was overrated, whatever. I just heard the name. Called him a fraud last week, bro. Yeah, I know, but that man. I didn't hate on him that much. Just before he got to the national championship game and got his second national player of the year, I called him a fraud. I mean, because they lost like, in the first round last year or something. Last like year? I know. Who was on the Duke team that lost to Mercy? They overrated? Who was on that Duke team? That was 2013? No, 2014. Who who's on that Duke team now? I gotta who was on the Duke team that lost to Lehigh? Duke 2013. Roster. Well, Jabari Park is not in the league. Quinn Cook's not in the league. 
Did you call him a fraud then when they lost, though? My uh, I said he trash. No, you didn't. I did say they were trash for that. I was there. You did not call Jabari Parker trash. I said Duke was trash. You didn't say, but you didn't say the best player on the team was trash. Rodney, Rodney Umsohood, uh, Rachid Suleiman. Shout out, Maryland. Oh, he was on the team. Hey, yo. Who? Simi Ojale. I did not know that. I, I know he did a year at Duke before he went. Uh, where else? Where did he go after Duke? He went. I know he, he was at Duke and then he went somewhere else. But SMU, SMU. There we go. Uh, Emil Jefferson, Andre Dawkins, Marshall. Half them, half Marshall, them went to the league. Marshall probably was the worst probably. Half of them went to the league, and you you ain't call none of them frauds. Well, I always thought Marshall probably was the worst probably brother. That I said half of them, half of the team went to the league. You never called them frauds. I ain't talking about Marshall Plumley. I'm talking about the whole team. Well, Marshall Plumley went to the league. He got drafted by the Knicks. Okay, so what about the rest? He decided to go serve his country. I'm saying I know he went to the league. That's why I said half of them. He Jabari went to the league. Okay. Injuries. Quinn Cook never uh, took a shot. Uh, uh, Andy Hood. He um he helped the Cavs out a good bit that one year. Interesting how you you got reasons for why they where they at now. Oh, and it was Why Zach are you Eadie? pressing me about damn Zach Eady? Like, damn. Because. About Zach e- I couldn't even get to my praise. No, because you do this all the time. I couldn't even get to my praise. You don't even realize it, but it's bad. We got to get past this. We got to. I criticize Embiid. I criticize Giannis. Why? Because I criticize Embiid. For for being on the floor at the time and being soft. And who and who did he play in the playoffs last year? He played he played the Nets last year. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. that's when it's before the... he played the Nets though. This is before no, you did. Oh no 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 no. Yes no, yes yes. No, this no, is before no, no, he played the Nets, bro. No, bro. This is before he played the Nets. Before he played the Nets. You called him the MVP two years in a row. And then after that series, man, he be flopping, bro. He always on that. He always on the floor. It took Nikola Jokic winning two MVPs, a Finals MVP, for you to for you to respect him. And Giannis, you didn't respect Giannis until that man won a chip. And even after that, you were still like, I don't really rock with Giannis like that, right or wrong. But dudes like KD, uh, do no wrong. Can do no wrong. The kind of player, okay? It's the kind of player. Right, right, right. Like dog connect tough. Who? Tennessee. Oh, dog right, Tennessee. He tough. That's a bucket right there. Tyler Cohen, tough bucket. What about, about Braden Smith. He can shoot. He didn't shoot last night, but he can shoot. I wasn't familiar. Listen, I wasn't familiar with this Purdue squad. They've been I didn't, like one team for the last two years. Okay, but we've been locked in on WBB <laughs> last three years, two years. But how you know Dog Connect nice if you ain't watch men's basketball? The sleepers. Shout out to my boys. They doing their thing. They talk about Braden Smith a lot. I know. That's Why another you... one that I knew of because of them. Why? What are you talking about? You crazy. Listen, bro. Listen. Listen. I know they're Big Ten. Listen. I know they're Big Ten podcast, right? Mm-hmm. It, you know, obviously because, you know, you got Greg who likes Michigan, Carter that likes Michigan State, right? They're Big Ten oriented, whatever. You know? So they talk about a lot of Big Ten guys, right? Mm. Me personally, I didn't see the hype in Zach Eaton. After last night, no, after no, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say last night. After this tournament, which is crazy for me to say, after this tournament in his senior season, after winning two national player of the years, I'm like, all right, this guy, this guy might be I, you know. He put up, I want to say. He had like thirty seven and ten last night. I was like, all right, I have nothing bad to say about Zach Eady. Like, so, so what you're telling me is it takes players like, yeah, thirty seven, thirty seven and ten. He had thirty seven so and ten last night. On it takes ten to twenty five shooting. So you're telling me that it takes people like Jokic, Giannis. I never watched Zach Eady play until this weekend. Let me, let, me let, me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. It takes guys like Giannis. Jokic, Edie, Luca. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Not in that company. I'm sorry. Edie, Edie is not in that company. Edie is not in that company. Finish. I let you finish. Okay. I let you finish. I didn't say he's in that company. 
I'm saying they're all in the same thing because they have already they've reached heights and you say, oh, they overhype or they're frauds. You called this man a fraud last week when I was on the phone with my brother before we started the show. You said that man was a fraud. He said, whoa. I said, yeah, that's kind of crazy. You said, but if he gets to the national championship, I said he was a fraud. No, no, no. This was your exact word. Who did they freaking lose to? He said, if he beats DJ Burns, I won't call him a fraud. I'll take it back. Exactly. And what he do? He, he had to beat DJ a Burns. six-year senior? He beat DJ Burns. A six-year senior, bro? Bro, ain't nobody was You gave that man more praise than Zach Eady, and he ain't won shit. Because I seen it. And he won an ACC tournament. He had to beat Duke in North Carolina to do so. And what Purdue do for the last three years? More than that. Way more than that. Okay. Like, but Purdue me, has a squad, bro. Purdue <laughs> has a squad. Let me no, no, they have a squad. They just <laughs> lost last night because they couldn't get it done in the second half. UConn is that squad. UConn is them let, dudes. Let me, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. It takes those kind of guys to go over and back for you to for you to send them respect. But you can see Brandon Miller play one time and he pro ready. I watched Brandon Miller up leading up to that point though. Why? He out of Alabama. Who wanna watch Alabama play? Bro, because Brandon Miller was get making Alabama good that year, bro. Like they had a squad that year, bro. Does that like, make Purdue good? That don't make you want to watch it. I'm not. I wasn't moved by it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wonder why. Cause I told you why. I was did. watching Bigs. You got like, like like watching Bigs. You just lied. You like watching DJ Burns. Cause he was cooking. He was bringing. He was restoring the feeling. He was restoring the feeling. The feeling of what? A traditional big Zach Eady is literally that. He is literally a traditional big. Oh my gosh, bro. We gotta we gotta You are bro. contradicting yourself so bad right We're now. We're scaring our viewers, dog. No, we not. <laughs> you are contradicting yourself so bad right now. I know, bro. I hate when I do this, bro. I hate when I do this. I hate when I do this. That's why I was trying to get Zach E praise, but you bring it up the BS stuff that I said leading up to the praise. Oh, now it's BS? I was going to do it on my own. I was like, look, I might have talked wrong. I was wrong about Zach E. But you was like, no, you said this. You said that. You said this. You can't. First of all, first of all I didn't do all that until you started lying. Who lied? I told the truth this whole time. You, you said, I don't really like bigs like that. Then you turned this around. This tournament opened me up to like big, bro. No, 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 no. Stop. You're, you're a hoop fan. Stop it. You turned around two minutes later and said, I like watching DJ Burns. He restored the feeling. The feeling of what? Post players. Big man play. The same way that Zach Eady played. He's just not 6'10 and 300 pounds. That is what I was getting towards, Tariq. But you like DJ Burns three weeks ago. You was like, yeah, DJ Burns. Bro, it was DJ, DJ Burns. Burns. Zach Eady, bro. You, got, you got DJ Burns. You got Zach Eady. You got dude from Colorado. Um, I want to say Tennessee has somebody too. Um, trying to think of who else are like a like traditional like looking big, like a big that restored a feeling. So you mean like Jaleel Okafor? Of course I did. Oh, okay, interesting. Traditional big though, right? Oh, all right. That's just, bro. Just Mark Williams? Through phases, bro. I'm as we get older, I'm appreciating the game more. All right. I'm 25 now. I'm appreciating the game better than when I did when I was 15. You contradicting yourself again. Because that was that was when you was 15. You respected it. Now you don't. I respected you him. Know. He was on my team. Oscar Sheboy. Mm. He was good. Uh, he went a fraud, though, right? I would say he was a fraud because he didn't have the hype and the expectations like Zach Eady had, you know? Like I said, I'm not a hype type guy. You know this, Tariq, with anybody who you're knows not, me. Hold on. You're not a hype type guy. Anybody who knows me knows I don't feed into the hype that much. I, I go to the beat of my own drum. What? So you in like Zion? Oh, of course, yeah. 
that's the that's the definition of hype, my nigga. What are you talking about? But Zion was Zion, bro. Like no one prospect, bro. No one went pick, and he's an all star now, bro. He's proving that he's worth the hype. You ain't like Lonzo Ball. Lonzo was in. No, 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 no. Lonzo no. We was in. We was there. We was there. I was in gas and Lonzo. I wasn't gassing Lonzo the way everybody else was. Did I have a triple answer B on my back, on my shirt? No. Answer me this. Answer me this. Answer me this. Did you watch Ball in the Family? Who did it? Now, you watched a Facebook show about a, a high school player. Who did Do you it? Like Lonzo Ball? I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Who not did hearing. it? There's a lot of people that didn't watch it. That man LeVar oh. Ball took America by storm, bro. There was a lot of people that didn't watch it, bro. That was on Facebook, bro. Don't do not do that. Okay. You, As a you, basketball fan. That was keeping up with the Kardashians for me. You was there with the hype, bro. Don't don't do, bro. Stop. No. Stop. Stop it. Hakeem Olajuwon, you ain't you don't like his you ain't like his game. No, I, I respect H- H- Hakeem Olajuwon. I respect Hakeem Olajuwon. He's a traditional legend. post, though, right? He's a legend. Pat Ewing, legend. Oh, Pat, traditional legend. post, right? Tim Duncan, legend. I, I traditional go- post list. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Restoring, no feeling. Luca Garza, you ain't like him. I'll put Luca Garza in the Zach Eady. <laughs> you crazy. I put Luca Garza in the Zach Eady category, man. That was You're crazy. That's how You're I view crazy. how I view Zach Eady is how I view Luca Garza. Back I in. wonder why. I just didn't get the hype, man. I wonder why. I just didn't get the hype. And then, like, fall, and then he fall into, like, the second round or something. Look yeah, at That ain't got nothing to do with what he did in college. Okay, but, like, he's not. Frank like, Kaminsky. You was rocking with Frank Kaminsky? Mm-hmm. He, he was good, but we, we took mm-hmm. care of him. That ain't had nothing to do with what I asked you just now. He was good, though. Frank the Saint was good. Mm, interesting. I just find it interesting that certain players you like, certain players you don't like, you know. Just like, just like during the game the other day, he was like, Caitlin out there acting like Luca. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. The optics, the optics don't look good. If, if the listeners of our show saw you tweet that, they they was like, oh, that's what, the optics don't look good. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, yeah, you, you and ML call me out about it, but I'm just like, that's I'm just gonna let it ride. But it's a ton of players that flop in that crop of calls. You ain't called oh, nobody. You're talking to me. The guy who used to argue with every ref that he came across in his playing days. Why you ain't say she like and me? The guy, because I wasn't trying to drag it out. Because I typed up, I typed that up. I was like, bro, you're talking to me here. I typed that up. I was like, you know what? Delete all of this. I'm not trying to drag this out. You deleted the tweet? Huh? You deleted the tweet? No, I was speaking oh. in response to you. I'm like, bro, like, what are we talking about? Like, I said, like, my, my high school coach literally remember me for arguing with him back in my rec days before he coached me in high school. Like, what are we talking about here, bro? So what So what was you talking about? You should have said, like, me for real then. Listen, I'm you a just... hooper. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it seems like she would go and, 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 and. No, 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 no. And yeah. not get back down court and go play defense. Have you ever watched LeBron James? At times. Have you ever watched LeBron James play basketball? Oh, of, of course. Hmm. I've been watching for what twenty one years now. How often does he do that? All the time. We called him out for it. Okay, I'm. I'm just curious. We keep calling LeBron out for it. I'm just curious. Don't be sensitive on that front. We I'm call just... people out for this. Just curious. All I do. All I do is ask questions. You got LeBron that did it. Well, that did it. He well, no, he does it still. He does it still. The show still. Got Draymond that does it. You got. It's a lot. It's a lot. Damn near every player in the league. For, for yeah. Real. Damn near every player in the league. But I admit, that was a, all right. Looking back, no, that was a wild tweet. This is the optics, bro. The optics. That's See, it. I'm not afraid to. I'm not. Unlike some people, I'm not afraid to admit my wrongdoings. I ain't got no problem with that. I can take accountability. I'm just saying. I can take accountability. I, I can admit when I'm freaking wrong. So I act like I ain't do nothing. Hey, congrats. Hey, no, but real talk, congrats to you, Commons, for going back to back. Very impressive, uh, especially after losing two um, key players from last year to the draft. 
um, and, and coming back and looking like y'all ain't never left, like dominating in the same fashion, dominating more than y'all did last year, honestly. Um, yeah, shout out to Dan Early. That man said, <clears throat> This is my guy, guy. Dan Hurley said, Y'all better get us now. Y'all better get us now because we coming. He told y'all in 2020, now 2024, he got two of them things. And UConn as a program got six. I think we got to talk about that more. I think we got to talk. We got. We really got to talk about Blue that Black? more. Blue Black? Oh, for for sure, most definitely. Like, come on now, you see the talent that's came that that has come through there. I'm just asking. You know the talent that's come through there, man. They don't, they don't, you see what they've really, done? They not typically in there. It's Kansas. Oh, they ain't blue, bro. I'm, all, right, all, right, all right, we could go. We could talk about women's basketball after this, but. UConn as a whole, both men's and women's, should be highly respected as a freaking program. What both teams have done, Gino with 11 rings. The men's squad was seven. Went on, was six. I just Put some respect on Connecticut, man. Put some respect on UConn, bro. I just like, asked what, bro. And, and, and this has been within the past, like, what, 30 years, too, that they did all of this? Really, like, 20. Yeah, 30. Started with like ninety six, so yeah. I was say, when was their first one? Like the men's one was ninety six, right? Probably so. Let's look this up. Um, I know Ray Allen and, and Rip Hamilton got that got their chip in uh ninety nine. Then you had the Mecca Okafor team, Ben Gordon team oh four. Then you had the uh, Kimmel Walker team, Shabazz Napier team, and then these last two teams. UConn men's basketball. Oh wow, it has um fireworks when you know you type it in. <laughs> All right, um, tournament champions. Oh no, ninety nine was their first one for the men's. So ninety nine, that's Rip Hamilton, um, which we call it team. Rip Hamilton and um Ray Allen squad. Um, oh four, that's the. Dang, who's what it is? Uh, oh four. That's um, the Mega Oak four. Been going to squad. Twenty eleven. That's the Kemba squad. Twenty fourteen. That's the Shabazz Napier squad. Twenty twenty three. That's last year. And twenty twenty four is this year. And they've made it to the final four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. They are. They've only lost one championship, and that was against South Carolina. Why you, smell like, why you smell like that? Oh, you know I smell like that. But two weeks ago, you said you ain't have a team. So why you smell like that? Pick a, ch- pick a side, bro. Are you a South Carolina fan or not? No, no, don't, don't put the hat down. Say it. I got I to gotta add. Look. Stand on it, bro. Add one. I got to add one. Stand on it. I got to add one. Are you are you a South Carolina fan or not? All right. I'll, I'll look at it like this. I rock with South Carolina. I support South Carolina. Uh huh. I support a lot of other people too. Like I'm going. Hold on. I'm going as a fan of the game as a whole. Like it's too many good players out there to root against. Yeah, stand on business, bro. Stand on business, bro. Hey, I'm Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I'm a fan of UConn, <clears throat> and I'm a fan of other teams and players. You can be that. Stand on business. Are you UConn or are you okay, USC? I'm saying here though. Yes. Like, listen. End of the day. You see what I got on. You see what I got on. Like you're not in it though. You're not standing on business. End of the day, I'm a South Carolina fan. Thank you. That's all you have to say. That's why I said yesterday too when I put out my fan, like my teams and stuff. I'm saying I am a South Carolina fan. Listen, I'm a South Carolina fan, but I got love and respect for different teams and different players. Ooh. All right. I was just asking. I just I don't want to get confused though, because people be like, "Oh." Aren't you a South Carolina fan? This, this, that, and that. Da, 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 Like, whatever. Like, no. Like, yeah, people yeah, don't matter. I, I rock with Notre Dame. You might see me with a Notre Dame hoodie, sweatshirt, whatever, T-shirt, whatever. I'm, 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 I'm Stanford and Texas. And I rock Tennessee. with Notre Dame. I rock with USC Trojans. Fight on. Shout out to Juju and them girls. Juju. My favorite all time game. Juju has emerged as my favorite player next to Hannah. They have emerged as my favorite players in, in, in college basketball this year. 
And then you got Texas. Texas is tough. Madison Booker going to be tough. Going to be a problem. LSU. LSU still going to be tough. Flaw J is the one. Big foe. Everybody can't be the one. I was about to say. That's what 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 I was about to say. I'm sorry. You already know how I am. Everybody can't be him. Everybody big, can't be her. Big foe. Big foe is one of the ones. That that's that's I should say that. Yeah, you big foe is one of the ones. There we go. Um, trying to think of who else it is. Duke. We're always right with Duke. Duke women's. They coming. Um. Huh? I think it was the team up north. Team up north. Oh, UConn. I don't know why I was. <laughs> Shout out to UConn. Shout out to Paige Buckets, man. Big fan of Paige. Big fan of UConn, too. As a, I don't know I'm a South Carolina fan, but I mean, it was UConn first before South Carolina for me. Like, oh, so you flip-flop. UConn oh, stopped winning championships. And you I mean, I, for a while, I did. When people asked, I was like, I am a fan of both UConn and South Carolina because I got to roll with the home squad. But ultimately, bro, like, I got to roll with the home squad. Like, UConn started losing, and you swapped over to South Carolina. No, so they were still winning. They they played in the national championship against each other. I said, when I say start losing, I mean start losing championships. Oh, but when, no. 2017, bro. 2016, actually. Listen, bro. You see that? Yeah, she left. She My left mom. a long time ago. I know she did. You pointing at somebody that was there a while ago, sir. I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, Sports UConn always going to hold a special place in my heart. I ain't going to never have that much hate towards UConn. Hmm. Or hate at all towards UConn, honestly. I said, damn, you just going to have some hate, though? I'm about to say, it, it, it is smidgy. If they play, if we, if, if South Carolina playing against UConn, I'm rocking with South Carolina 20 times out of 20. Wow. That's but crazy. UConn always holds a special Push place in my heart. Because, ah. Hold on. UConn holds a special place in my heart because – they were part of my introduction to basketball. You say this all the time. That's I gotta reiterate it for the one for the new listeners, for the ones who don't know the story. And oh, then you switched up on. <laughs> Listen, they introduced you to hoop, and you was like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm rocking with I'm rocking with South Carolina, though." Because I can't listen. I gotta rock with South Carolina because I can't be on the road. Because they started winning. I can't be on the wrong side of history. Like I gotta support the home squad. I'm sorry. You you start supporting when they like, start winning. I look being from South Carolina rooting against South Carolina. You look like anybody from their home state being against somebody else. What you mean? It's like not, it's just like you can't really get South Carolina in my opinion, bro. You could. I did. You do. You you're a Clemson fan. <laughs> I root hard against them, especially during football season. Yeah. Not women's basketball season, but everything else, yeah, I hope y'all lose every time. Also, it's like, you, I don't know. Like, South Carolina didn't, didn't always start off as this, you know? Mm. Yeah. Anyways, man, we've been talking for uh, 30 minutes on stuff that hasn't been related to the national championship. <laughs> Welcome to the show, people. Anyways, um, <laughs> Shout out to South Carolina women's basketball for completing an undefeated season, being the uh... <laughs> I think, think they are the eleventh team to do so. Anyways, being the latest to go undefeated. <laughs> Being the latest to go undefeated uh, and oh. completing off their season, um, this team was overlooked, doubted, um, kind of the underdogs at times. Um, but Don Staley showed why she's one of the best coaches in the in the nation, in in the sport, coaching the squad. Together recruiting. That was the first thing she think was the recruiter. I mean, was the scout team. She was, like, mm-hmm. yo, yeah. Shout out to I forget the guy's name that she said, but I thought that there was were, that there was, were not 
teams before that before this one. You said what? But there were nine teams to go undefeated. Okay. And six of those teams were the were UConn six different times. Yeah. One of them was Tennessee in ninety eight. The other one was Baylor with Brittany Griner. Mm-hmm. And then there was Texas in nineteen eighty six. Word. Yeah, them UConn teams are crazy. The girls will go hundred and something games in a row. Damn. In 2009, 2010, they went back to back. Three, two, four in a row. Then Maya went four in a row. Nah. How many? How many did she went in a row? Three, two. Cause she went three total. Okay. I could be wrong though. Those numbers start to to jumble around when you got so many at UConn that. Right. Because you, to... you got Dennis Rush that had three. Dang, she had three. That's crazy. You won two at UConn, 2009-2010. Oh, Maya Moore did? Because they lost in the Final Four to Notre Dame or last year. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, shout out to South Carolina, though. Shout out to Don Staley, what she did with this program. Um, You got to – shout out Raven Johnson, bro. Like, the business. coming back from the Final Four game last year where – I don't say she got embarrassed, but you know, Caitlin did what she did. You know, left her open from three, straight cook, had her way. Raven said, "No, not this year, bro." They completed a revenge tour, man. So, um, Raven Johnson clamped up Caitlin Clark at. Let me see. I just I just responded this to somebody too because they three were. Of us. Three of eleven. Yeah, because somebody was like, oh, she still had 30, yada, yada. Uh, um, but when Raven Johnson... Hey, that sounds like you, bro. 30 is 30, remember? What happened to 30 is 30? It's a little different. It's a little, it's a little different when you got a ring attached to it. Mm, interesting, interesting. Yeah. But Raven Johnson guarded Caitlin Clark on... Um, Two possessions. Um, she went three for 11, scored seven points, 27% for four t- turnovers. Raven was getting after it, bro. Like, her defense, bro, she was just like, give me, give me. And I was like, oh, let's go. Like, that's what I like to see. Like, I'm not about to let you do me like you did last year, bro. Like, no, you're not about to put me on the stage like that again, bro. Like, no. And I think this is good for Raven being that, you know, she's a sophomore and her development as a player is going to be great to see, especially coming into her junior year and becoming a leader on this team now. Um, People better watch out. (laughs) People better watch out. People are going to realize, people people are going to find out who Raven Johnson is in, in these next few years. Before she finishes out her college career, um, shout out to Tessa Johnson. It's always in these national championship games where where all you need is that one per. It's it's one game. It's not a series like it's you know NBA and whatever or WNBA, but all you need is one game for somebody. Last year, Jasmine Carson. This year is Tessa Johnson, bro. Came through big, making big shots. A lot more likely this year, though. I would say, like this year was more like. This one, the, I don't want to be disrespectful. This one doesn't seem like fluky. Like, like surprising, you know? Like, it didn't, yeah, come, yeah. It didn't come out of nowhere the way Jasmine That's Carson. What I mean. That's what I should yeah. say. Like, like Tessa yeah. Johnson is a good player, is a good shooter. Yeah. Like, this South Carolina team, anybody can be that person for you on a given night, you know? Like, you can have a Chloe Kitts night. You can have a Riven Johnson night. You can have a Malaysia Full Wiley night coming off the bench. You got have a Camilla Cardozo night. Like, this team outside of the final four, they're, they're Swiss Army nice, literally. Outside of the final four and the national championship, every every game was a different leading scorer. I think Camilla did it twice, and then Tessa ended up doing it twice with the national championship game. But before that, it was someone different every game. Yeah. So yeah, Tessa Johnson, nineteen points, um, three of six from three, made some of the biggest shots of the game. Nope. With all confidence, stepped into all every single one. Like she knew it was bread. Fly, I was like, let's go, bro. And I, I was glad they were falling, because I mean, for a while, you know, South Carolina really hasn't had a team where they've had shooters like this, 
Hey, that's that's what really made them different this year between Tessa Johnson, Raven Johnson, Tahina Pow Pow. Pow Pow! Pow! Her voice is like, bro, my last name is Pow Pow, bro. Y'all be hearing from me. Like, she too humble. <laughs> bro, when I'm tweeting, that's how I'm saying it out loud. I swear. When people are tweeting. Oh, man. Bro, like, I tweet Pow. Like, she hit one. Pow Pow. Like, boom. Like, when I'm going, yeah. Pow Pow. Now her like, brother was talking his ish, though. As he should. Show. Yeah. As he, as he should. should. As, as he should. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. He was like, he was talking crazy. That little sis could play in the SEC. She got that chip now. I'm like, yeah. I I just, I I just love stuff like that. Um, Chloe Kitts. Shout out to Chloe Kitts. Big time. Yeah, made some good plays. Double Um, double. Yeah, tough. Camila Cardozo double double too. Fifteen and seventeen rebounds. Malaysia came off the bench going crazy. For sure. He, she was out there trying to get like, Boy, she I, hit the – ooh, I thought she was going to do. Boy, she hit the – I said, I caught oh. Up. I said, oh. Yeah. Well, I said, oh, my gosh. She out here trying to really violate me. That's why I love her game so much, bro. She's hella confident, bro. She don't like, waste no time. No move. She just plays. Like, she, she, she gets just, straight to it every time. Yeah. I can't wait to see her career pan out too, bro. Like, she – just goes out there and play, bro. Like, she's not – you can't guard her, really. Like, she, unpredictable is the stuff that she is thinking of or is going to want to do. Like, yeah. No, I just remember y'all going – hearing Rebecca Lobo on the call. It was like, Malaysia full Wally. She could dunk a basketball. It's like – What? Throwing, I was like <laughs> – They're, like, throwing that in there, like <laughs> – Yeah, I didn't know. Word. I said, damn, she can dunk. I mean, I know we got Ashton Watkins that can dunk. I think she might have got him mixed up because I, I, I ain't never seen old girl dunk. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she could dunk. She only like 5'8", bro. If that, for real, for real. She like I, said, I wouldn't be surprised if she could dunk. Bro. Like, I don't know. Wow. That, that's that's Maybe a, you that, know what they're the kids these days, bro. That's amazing. I love them right there. She can dunk. Shit. And the cra- the scariest part about South Carolina, they're gonna be even better next year. Yeah, because Joyce Edwards is like that. Joyce is tough. Like she, Joyce is tough. And you know she gonna she gonna play. She gonna be ready. Madison McDaniel's oh, she gonna be ready. Ten. She yeah, play. She's five ten. Five ten. Yeah. Is there is there highlights of her dunk? I don't know, but I mean, if she five ten, I can believe she could dunk. Five ten. That's kind of tough. Malaysia. Oh wait, hold on. That ain't a dunk. I would say I won't be surprised. Are nah, you good? You good? But uh, who else? Wait, 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 wait. Unless she got up and got one. Still can't see it. Golly, bro. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah. She got up and got that. I haven't got to it. But um, yeah, no, shout out to Sakala. See, shout out to Dom Staley, bro. That post game yeah, speech. Yeah. That post game speech, boy. On a Sunday? Preaching. Somebody was right to put them church orgs behind it, because that was a true testimony, bro. <laughs> Listen, man. You, you can feel all the emotion throughout that whole thing, bro. And like, you really can't. Like, how can you really get Don, bro? Like, how can you? How can you hate hate on Don when Don has done nothing but help grow the game and it's been acceptive and receptive and been, um, it's always been one to praise other players and other people in position. Like, yeah, I mean, of course, her girls come first, but you know, she shouted out Caitlin Clark right away, like. And what Caitlin Clark has done for the game. And shout out to Caitlin Clark for what she's done for the game in her four years. Like, Caitlin Clark has had arguably – be careful with my words here. But she's had one of the best collegiate careers that we've seen in our lifetimes. And will be remembered as such. Um, especially this year. Um, no, nah, it's crazy. Oh, my gosh. The national championship game. 
brought in 18 million views. 18.7. 18.7 million viewers, bro. Straight eclipsing the final four views. Not a great day for the no one watches women's basketball crowd. It's not, not, a, good, bro. not a good weekend. That crowd's been on for some time now. They, um, they'll find a way. Shout out to Caitlin Clark, 30 points. Um, had a crazy, had one of the craziest first quarters. I've seen. I thought she was about to run them off, bro. For what? I was, I was, I was stressing low key. Eighteen I'm like, points I'm in the first quarter. I was like, oh, is she I was shooting? like, that's a tough eighteen. I thought it was gonna get ugly for a I second. Was like, Yo, Caitlin, ew. <laughs> like, it was, it was, ooh. She got her shots off and stuff to start the game, and then they second quarter, second half, they wasn't having that. They was like, yeah. Try and shoot. Try and do anything. Try to pass. Do do something. Do anything. Do it. I dare you. That's how they was going, Shorty, bro. Nah, look. The first, like, I say four or five minutes, I was like, this is not how Like, when Kate Martin took the ball off the dribble and shot that fade away in the paint. I said, oh, it's like that today? I'm like, it's that kind of game. Because, oh, we didn't even talk about the Final Four game. We did it. Look, 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 look. When I tell y'all. Bro, everybody and mama was locked in on that game when I was out. Like, when I tell y'all. Everybody and mama was locked in on that game. I went, I went, I went out to go watch it. Hey, when I tell you, everybody in their mom was locked in. Everybody in their mom was locked in. I mean, like, people had phones out watching from different corners. Like, people were watching. From t- everybody was watching it, bro. And it was like, you was like, that's where I realized, like, bro, people are really watching to see if Caitlin wins or not, bro. Like, you even for Caitlin or against Caitlin, bro. Like, and it's crazy. And it's crazy how many people were, like, actually looking for UConn, bro. I mean, I get a lot of northerners come down south, so I get it. But like, yeah, yeah, Man, that that game. Outside of watching Naomi play the last couple of months of her coming back, that's the most stressed I've been watching a basketball game in a long time. Like, I wasn't that stressed last year when we lost to Ohio State. Um, the national championship game two years ago, I wasn't that stressed about. Um, the year before that, we lost to Arizona. I was probably pretty pretty pissed about that game. I ain't gonna lie, because I felt like we should have won that game for sure. Um, and then obviously COVID was there, but this game, bro, this is the first game where I was where I had to like somewhat root against Caitlin. And even after a while, like, and it's funny because my family was watching the game with me, and they were like, I don't know, they hadn't like seen a ton of either team, mm-hmm. so they was like, the way the game was going was kind of making me mad because it looked like Hannah Stokey might have been the best player on the court. <laughs> like, if that was your first time watching, you was like, oh, Hannah Stokey, like, really like that, and in my head, I'm like respectfully she not like yeah. we like i know what her game is but she was she was doing stuff i'm like this is what we doing today Kate I'm Martin, mean, yeah, like it's gonna be good no 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 i'm by no means am i saying that she's not gonna be good i'm just saying for the past two years the way she's gotten her points is the same way the way she got her points in the final four game was completely different from the last two seasons that's that is all i'm saying i'm not saying that she don't got talent I'm not saying she's not skilled none of that I'm just saying, from what we've seen the past two years, she wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing that this much this year. She did a little bit in the game where she scored 45, but still a lot of those were rim runs and just getting getting further than the, the defense or transition defense. Kate Martin hitting post fades, two of them. Well, you should have seen my face, boy. I was like, Kate Martin, post fades? In the clutch, she tried one in that championship game. That thing got smacked. I said, "Now why we could, 
But nah, look. I will say, I think the last call was terrible because of the time. You can't call that with four seconds left, bro. Whether it's whether it's on the other side or this side, you cannot call that with four seconds left. You got to let that player get that. You got to let somebody get a shot. At the game, with everyone watching, the game could have... What? I said 15 million. Yeah. The game should have ended with either a Paige Becker's make or miss. If she makes it, everyone's going crazy. If she misses, everyone is still going crazy because it came down to the last shot and they like, damn, that's a that's a sad way to like that's a sad way to end your season. You know you know how it goes. So instead of that, they called a movie screen where it didn't even get her open, where Hannah Stokey was setting movie screens the whole game. I watched Ashlyn Shea try to run through the paint to, to get to a shooter and Hannah Stokey slide and throw her knee up. Just her knee. No call. But they wait till four seconds left to call that call specifically. That's my issue with it. You cannot call it at that time. Like Paige said, that game should not have gotten to that point. Let's I'm gonna just keep it a buck right now. All right. Man, Gina. justice for Paige, man. <clears throat> huh? I said justice for Paige, man. No, 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 no. Hell no, hell no. I'm about to oh, keep yeah, it a buck. Yeah, justice for Paige, bro. No, no, fuck no. I'm about to keep it a buck. Watch. Watch. Right, keep it a buck. Keep it up. Look, Gino. Fantastic defensive game plan. Shout out to Nika Mule. Shout out to Nika, man. She deserves all the flowers that she's getting right now because she's been doing this shit for years. For yeah, years. Bro. She hit some big cool. shots, too. Big shot of the game she hit. That three-corner was was huge. Stepped up big time now, for, for the Huskies. The offensive game plan, and I don't even want to say fully the offensive game plan because I know it's a little bit of her, too. But the offensive game plan has to be different. It has to be different. Yeah. You didn't run not one high pick and roll with Paige Beckers as the ball handler. Not yeah. one. Yeah. You can't continually move her off the ball and expect her to be able to get the ball with enough space for her to shoot it confidently or for her to not just try to run another play. She's too unselfish. And this is where I come to Paige. Paige, you are one of the best players in the country. One of the best players college basketball, period. It's time to be unselfish. Especially in a game of that magnitude. You got to be more unselfish. You can't. I understand those are your your sisters. Y'all are super close. You want everybody to feel involved. If they win with you taking over that game, I can assure you they will have, they will be just as happy as if you played the way you did, and y'all found a way to win that game. Yeah, show them why you page. I'm look. We've seen her take over games. She did Come it. on, she did it with the Baylor game. She did mm. it in NCAA. Mm. She did it in the Final Four. She's done it. She's taken over games, but then there's times where she just doesn't want to keep pushing and push. Like, no, like people, you can say what you want about Caitlin. She gonna get them things up. If they win or lose, it's gonna be on her. At thirty, win or lose, it's gonna be on her, and she accepts that. Paige has to get to that same mindset. Now, granted, she missed an entire season, so maybe if she hadn't missed all last season, maybe by this point, she's there. Because this is this is really her only third year playing college basketball. Next year will be her fourth. So. Maybe next year is the year that she realizes, hey, I'm the best. Like, I feel like there's a like page. Like, she knows that she can be the best and knows that she has the talent and the skill to be the best. And I don't want to say she doesn't want to be, but I feel like she feels like if she is, then I don't know. I just feel like some of the media – tries to like I feel like some of the media attention makes her not want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like going into the game, she's like, you know, there I hope next year 
They're talking about more than just me, which is fantastic. That's honestly, it's beautiful, really. But I think when people, are, when there are young players that think like that, I think that's something that can get into their head of where you're like, okay, if I do this, then uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking about it too much. I just feel like there's a little bit of a block there. And I don't know exactly what it is. It could be media narratives. It could be, you know, not wanting to push too hard, not wanting to upset people. It could be any number of things. Maybe she just Probably didn't be, maybe she before. didn't feel comfortable doing it. I don't know. But it just that game could have been won if the ball was in her hands more. Yeah, I agree, bro. Like I feel like you gotta go through pace, bro. Like you gotta play through your best player. Like Especially in a winner go home situation, you got to play through your best player. And if your best player is not playing, then that's what you're playing up to to their standard. And that's when you look elsewhere. Paige is playing up to her standard. Uh, let's see how many points she had in this game. See, this is what I need to do most. Um, let's see. Paige has 17 points this game. That's what I thought it was. Now, her and Caitlin did get off to an interesting start. Cold start for the both of them in the first half. Uh, but, I mean, it was an ugly game. I don't say an ugly game, but it was just like, I mean, 69-71, they ended up scoring in a, like the usual college I just think both both teams I knew what the both teams were started for off pretty sluggish. I think both teams, I think both coaches knew what the weaknesses were for the other teams on offense. Like yeah. the way that they were guarding Caitlin threw off Iowa to start the game. And then yeah. towards the end of the game, they got more confidence. That's why Kate Marshall was able to take it off the dribble and get buckets. Mm-hmm. And Stokey was able to go into the post and score. I think on the other side, I think they knew that. They would rather Ashlyn Shea, KK Arnold, um, Nico Mule shoot the ball than Paige or Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. So you leave some of those openings to where those players have to make a play, or those players have to shoot the ball. KK Arnold was really good, especially in the first half. Um, and then foul trouble started to struggle or started to mess, like swing some of that, I feel like. I think some of them, Ice Brady has some big buckets too. Um, so really, I think at a certain point it was just coming down to who was gonna make those, who was gonna continually make those plays. And Iowa started to, then UConn came back. Then Iowa started to, then UConn came back, and then we had what we had at the end of the game. I think it was a mix of good defensive game plans from both teams, and a little bit of just teams not playing or not being used to playing that side. Like Iowa struggled with uh, West Virginia. They struggled at a point with LSU. But after seeing West Virginia, they were able to take advantage of teams overplaying on pay or on Caitlin and being able to go back door or just like the LSU game, Sydney of Folder scored like three times just off them overplaying on Caitlin on the left side and just her getting right to the basket and there being nobody there. <clears throat> oh man, no, I, I I'm laughing because well, Tariq knows my dad. <laughs> Cardosa. Listen, my dad, Don, Don, if y'all got a coach's position available, any if y'all got an assistant coach position available, I will send in his resume for him. Okay. <laughs> oh man. But during the 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 natty, you know, they were getting a couple like back door or like you know just like extra passes he's like he's like watch the bounce pass they doing a bounce pass every time you gotta play the bounce pass <laughs> they kill him on that bounce pass I was just like yo <laughs> I swear my dad wanted to coach forever bro like <laughs> but Dog going, yeah, like that was the thing that was going for him. It was like they were making the extra passes at times whenever South Carolina would over defend or just they were good at finding the open person. 
And that's why they stayed around for as long as they did in certain moments. But then Cyclone went on them Cyclone runs. Yeah. But even when they did, I wasn't out of it. I was still had a shot. They were, yeah. Then Caitlin started pressing a little too early. Yeah. She did need to get she needed to get to it. She started pressing a little bit early. She started shooting the threes a little bit early. And then started getting to the rim too late. I'm like, what are we doing? Like Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you going to the rim? But you know, shout out to Caitlin. The pressure that she had on her back the last two seasons to deliver every single time is something I don't think we can say we've ever seen in a women's game. Mm -hmm. And I, I stand ten toes on that. Look, I don't I don't think she's the greatest of all time in women's college basketball. But she's got a great case. And she can say that she was one of the key differences, the key components of this game changing. Because yeah. Everyone tuning in to watch her, and obviously there were team, there were people watching, tuning in to watch Angel Reese and to watch all the teams, you know, whatever. But a lot of people tuned in just to see what Caitlin Clark was going to do. And more times than not, she delivered last year against South Carolina, 41 ball. Against LSU, another 30 ball, even though they ended up losing the game. This year, 41 ball against LSU. Um beat UConn to get to the um, championship game. Get to the championship game. 18 point first quarter. After that, it, it did get a little ugly. Raven Johnson definitely held her own. Definitely got her get back. Um, but to see what she has done the last two years, and even when it was time for her to break records, she took no time. Like, I know everybody was like, oh, she had that one fourth quarter that she had where she all she needed to do was get eight points. She went cold, couldn't do it. And I think they ended up losing that game, I want to say. Did she get Nebraska. taken out of that game, too? What's up? So did she get taken out of that game, too? Uh, That's possible. I think that's the game they lost to uh, Nebraska when Nebraska beat them. Yeah, and, and Lisa Buddha was like, oh, did the fans deserve to see the record get broken? Yeah. Yeah. So then they play Michigan. Michigan, now, as people know now, Michigan had wrote her a letter, or all the Michigan players had wrote her a letter. People made a big deal about that. I wouldn't but, have wrote letter. I wouldn't. My name would not have been signed on that letter. I'm sorry. It, it's not a big deal. Um, she wasted no time breaking that record. It was eight points. She got the thing in two minutes. I'm talking about came down full sp full speed, pull up three, boom, like wasted no time. No time, buddy. Against Ohio State, ran it up to get to the uh, and then. Got to the Big Ten tournament, ran that up, played Nebraska, beat them in the championship game. Got her to get back on them. So every time that eyes have been on the Caitlin Clark and waiting for her to do something crazy or waiting for her to make that big moment, make that big splash, she did it. Yeah. The only thing she didn't do was win the championship. Yeah. Everything else she accomplished. There's nothing else in college basketball that she didn't accomplish. So – just want to give her her flowers. Player of the year. What's up? That's a two-time national player of the year. Yeah. Just want to give her her flowers because having that kind of burden, that kind of pressure on your back to play the way that you play every single game. And if she doesn't, then they're like, oh, look, up, look how she shot. Look at this. Look at that. Everyone wants to talk about the inefficiencies and all this other stuff. She's shooting from 30 feet, bro. Are you expecting her to shoot fifty percent from three when she's shooting from thirty feet? Right, like stuff not even efficient when he shoot, bro. Like what are we talking about? Her her three point percentage or her uh, there was a big percentage of her three point shots, and they looked or like they looked at all her three point shots. Her average feet from the rim was twenty five feet. Twenty five. That's not normal. Like twenty five feet is is pretty damn far. So, like, for her to normally shoot from about that far out and be that efficient or be the efficient the way she was, like, just – and to bring the team that she brought, like – and this is not disrespecting to none of them because Kate Marshall uh, – Kate Marshall – Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall, Hannah Stalky, Cynthia Falter, 
uh, Molly Davis, Kylie Fearbuck, all had huge moments this season, the last couple of seasons. But you put her on that team, and for her to get them to a Final Four, a national championship, back-to-back seasons, like, that's incredible. Unreal, for real. Like, she she deserves a lot of credit. But South Carolina deserves just as much credit. Because for them to go yes. undefeated, for them to go undefeated, brand new starting five, people did not think they were gonna be that good. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they didn't think they were gonna be a final four team or anything like that. But to rank South Carolina six means you probably wanted to rank them lower. You just didn't want to get that pushback. So ranking them six was kind of crazy in the time. Looks even crazier now. Um they brought in these freshmen that we were all talking about, like, oh, you know, Malaysia for Wiley's coming in. Um, we're going to see what she's going to do. You bring back Camilla. You bring back Raven. You bring back Bree. Uh, Chloe Kiss and Ashton Watkins get, got a year under the or got some years under their belt. Chloe, the one year. Uh, Ashton, the one year. So you're looking and you're looking around and you're like, why can't they get back? Why wouldn't they still be this good? They bring in Tina Pop out, who – is a steady point guard who can shoot the ball at a high clip. Like, mm. And then you look, oh, they had, nobody really talked about this Tessa Johnson kid. First games, she was hooping. We're like, whoa, she can shoot that thing too. Yeah. So it's like they had the best defense efficiency. And their their offense efficiency wasn't that far behind. I, I wanna I wanna see the numbers for sure. But they kept saying, oh, it's the number one in offensive efficiency versus defense efficiency. I want to say South Carolina was probably top five in that too. So, and then they were third in three point shooting percentage all season. So, like this version of South Carolina is going to be even scarier to face than the ones y'all faced in the past because they have everything. There's nothing they don't have. They can bring in Malaysia, Tessa, uh, Chloe, or Ashton, whichever one's coming off the bench. Uh, you got Ray, you got Tahina, you got Breeze, you got Chloe, you got um, Ashlyn. Then you got people coming in next year. South Dawn always brings in more. She's never going to stop bringing players in because those players know I'm still going to get my chance if I go about everything the right way. If I go about everything the right way and I trust the process, I'm going to be right back and we're going to be right back here next year and I'm going to be in the same position that players were before me. Um and definitely want to give a shout out to Dawn because she continually or continues to push for not only her school, but for every other school, every other team, just women's basketball in general. And to see how her past players come back and how they how much they care for her, how much they love her, how much they love the program. That's a real culture. Like, there's a lot of teams that win a lot, and you see, like, alumni come back and, you know, they're around. But I haven't seen any team, I haven't seen any coach have the, have the, the love and the joy that players have or that players do have when they come back to see Don or when they come back around the team. Like, to see Aaliyah Boston, like, after – the national championship going up, running, hugging, and Breezy Hall just jumping in her arms. Um, Dawn crying at the um, podium. Like, I don't think people understand how much. Like, Dawn said she never wa- rewatched the game from last year. Raven Johnson said she watched it a bunch of times. Breezy Hall said she watched it a bunch of times. Dawn said, I didn't watch it one time because I knew what I needed to do differently. She did that. She did it differently. Like, she came in. She brought in new players. She brought in a new philosophy with her same philosophy. She brought in a new attitude and just a new style. She she talked about this year how she really let them just roll and just let them, you know, figure it out. She they told I think she said in June they told her trust the process. She said she she was like, Okay, we'll see what happens. And now they got a national championship because of it. So um Dawn has won three championships three different ways. She won with Asia and some really, really key pieces around her. 
Then they run with Dominance and Aaliyah and Zaya and Destiny Henderson. And then you won with young players and they dominate Camila Cardoso. But the three-point shooting that they had in this was way different from years past. So shout out to Don for being able to change and being able to see where they needed to improve and doing that without without even thinking twice about it. Um, and that was the key to her winning that, or to her getting another championship. Um, going undefeated is not easy. We, we've seen plenty of teams get to the championship game undefeated and lose. We've seen plenty of teams get to the tournament undefeated and lose. There was a team coming in this year that people said was going to go 38-0. They lost six games. So it's just you got to – there's so much that goes into college basketball, and Dawn understands every aspect of it because she was a player. She was a player at the highest level, uh, player of the year multiple times. Played in the Olympics, played in the W, coached like Temple, South Carolina. Like she understands every aspect of the game and she understands the people, like players are humans. And that's probably the biggest aspect that Don has that other coaches are lacking. Is she understands that her players are human. Yeah, Don has been an integral part of growing this game since her times of being a player, as you mentioned, her times of being a coach. Like, I believe that I don't know. It's something that my my pastor said, and it's like you're in the you're in the right place, right? And I believe that, and I'm starting to believe that more and more as I'm getting older. And it's like you know, God puts you in position to fulfill your purpose or whatever. I feel like being at Don as the player, Don as the coach. I feel like she's fulfilling her purpose. And growing this game the way that she's had, you know, being that that South Carolina team that she brought together, led by Asia Wilson, was kind of I don't say the start, but it's like them winning that championship and them not being a college basketball powerhouse kind of woke some people up. It wasn't a Notre Dame, it wasn't a Tennessee, it wasn't a UConn, it was South Carolina for once. And now Asia Wilson becomes the best player in the W. And then you got more people coming in playing for South Carolina after that. And now South Carolina's taking the world by storm. Everybody loves South Carolina. People have never been to South Carolina love South Carolina. Like people are South Carolina's getting a bunch of attention and it's at the right moment when the game is growing the most. It's like, bro, like, who would have thought I listen. 15, 20 years ago, when I first was getting into basketball, I never would have thought that South Carolina would have been a face of women's basketball or a face of basketball for, for that matter. Like, growing up, man, it was always the other big names. It was always the UConn, the, the Duke, the Kentucky, North Carolina, the Texas, the Tennessee, Syracuse, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. UCLA, like, it was always those teams that would get the talk. Florida, like, it was those teams that would get the talk and attention. Now, I know I'm talking men's too here, but South Carolina's on the rise, bro. I was talking with my boy about this the other day. Like, South Carolina's a hidden gem. But shout out to Dawn, what she's done with this program, man, because she really turned into something special. And she really just gets started. She only got three of them things, but them three hold weight. Them three carry weight, carry some serious weight, bro. Some serious weight. And the way she's done it, man, like, oh, that's why it's like I felt her in that press conference. I mean, not press conference, that that uh, post-game interview, bro, like, People overlooked, doubted this team because they didn't know who was on this team to start the season. Or or they didn't have any big, big names. You know, they didn't have a Leah Boss or, or Asia Wilson like they had before in other championship runs. No, but they had a complete team top and bottom full of All-Americans, full of five-star players, full of players that work well, mesh well together. Bringing in Tahina Pow Pow along with uh, having Camila Cardozo as your, you know, your senior um as your seniors, 
and, and them being an integral part of this championship run as well. Um, and then really just guiding the youth on that squad, bro. Because it was times where, like, things get out of hand a little bit, whatever, and they were like, all right, let's get back together. Like, like let's reel this back in, you know? So, I mean, I think this is a special team. I think this is a team that's going to be talked about for a long time, especially because a lot of them are coming back. You got Chloe Kitts, who'll be a junior next year. And you got um, Raven Johnson, who'll be a junior next year. You got Tina Powell, who's coming back for a fifth year. You got Malaysia Fawali, who'll be a sophomore next year. Tessa Johnson, sophomore next year. Like, integral part, big parts of this team are coming back. Uh, Ashton Walker's coming back next year, too. She'll be a senior, right, next year? He's your junior next year. Junior next year, really? Wow. Um, I think this is her sophomore year. Dang. So yeah, you got. Because the only ones, the only ones that won the championship two years ago were Breezy and Raven. I'm pretty sure. Because Chloe was an early enrollee last year. Camilla came in last year. She transferred from Syracuse. Um, Raven was on the team, but tore her ACL. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when, like the first game. Or uh, well, not first game. Maybe like third game of the season. And I want to say Ashton Watkins was last year. She is a... No, that's right. That's right. I remember we had that damn discussion with uh with Dion. <laughs> he was like, why is she in the game and she can dunk? I'm like, bro, that's not... <laughs> that is that, that doesn't mean... They... Whatever. But, um... But yeah, no, I'm just amazed just, you know, by this team and this team is gonna get better. And at the right time too, bro. Everybody got their eyes and attention on South Carolina on this game. Like they brought in 18 million viewers, which passed everything. And it's funny, I told I was out at an event before the game and you know, I was talking to my boys, so they know I cover this and everything. Everybody anytime anybody see me, they start talking basketball. So I was like, yeah. It's like, bro, it's crazy. They, like, they broke the record, this, that, and that, whatever, uh, the LSU game. I said, yeah, but the UConn game brought them more viewers than that. It's like, no, they didn't. I'm like, yeah, they did. <laughs> and I was like, bro, and then, like, championship game is in a couple hours. That's going to break the record. What it do? He says that it peaked at 21 million? Yeah, that's insane. Like, it was average of 18 million. It, it, it at one time was at 21 million. That's insane. 21 million. And it was a good game, too. It wasn't like it was a ball. Like, that was a game. Like, Not fact. Front to back, like, a good game, you know? Like, that's really what I was I know the UConn game turned into a blowout last night with, with uh Purdue. But, I mean, even then, that first half was tough. So, I'm pretty sure I raked in about a bunch of viewers. But I don't think it'll touch South Carolina. And, 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 Hell no. Uh, no, because, bro, everybody's tuning in, like, even the analysts, they're like, bro, I can't name – like Shaq and Kitty, they're like, I can't name five college players. They can't name ten on the women's side, so tell them shut up. Like, I, if you're going to say – I'm, I'm, I'm more so speaking to the, I'm, I'm more so speaking to the Cameron Brink quote from this weekend. But I'm just saying, if they're going to say that, at least say five different names. You can't say Caitlin, Juju, Hannah, uh, Paige, Angel every single time. Like, that's the same five. Give me another five. Okay. There. Give me another five, and then I'll respect what you're saying. But until then, don't just say that just to hop on the bandwagon so that people can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, I love you. Yeah. Nah. Because Shaq just two years ago was saying lower the rims. So I'm not I'm not really listening to what he's saying. And Kenny was just at All-Star Weekend saying crazy shit about Sabrina. So yeah, we not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. About to get him no respect for that. No, I'm just saying no, no. But I'm, I'm like, like, like I'm saying, I'm not giving them the praise for saying, "Hey, you guys are watching women's basketball." Like that's like, that's like us showing up to our job. It's like, hey, you're going to your job. Like, hey, nobody gives you a pat on the back for for going to your job. I mean, nobody gives you a pat. On the back. A lot of people don't go to their job. Facts. Oh, when they there, they still not doing their job. So there's a lot of people that should be getting pat on the back because yeah. Andrea Carter. She deserved a pat on the back. Oh, oh, most okay. definitely. And that's what we're going to get to. Yeah. L. Dunkey, pat on the back. They was at yeah, their job ESPN, and they did their job. That ESPN studio squad, bro, talk about a big three. That's a big three right there. Like, they put the coverage on their backs. And shout out to Carolyn Peck, too. Um, Aaliyah. 
on that championship day too it was cool. Yeah. And fun for you. You know what? Shout out to Ryan and Rebecca. All right. I'll say it. Shout 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 to them. Shout out to them. Okay. They do they do, they do a good job with what they do. Might not always go their way, but they they do a good job what they do. He said it might not always go their way. That's crazy. You mean it might not always go Rebecca's way? Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. You said there. Okay. If you say there, then Ryan, means... Ryan is pretty neutral. Ryan is pretty neutral. Yeah, obviously he is. I mean, he got the reason I speak. Yeah. I don't know about the Liberty though, because like he called he called. I said he called the Liberty Nets. Like, yeah, so. So that one is it's a little, it's a little iffy. It's just slightly, just slightly. It ain't even Lobo played for the Liberty. And yeah. Brianna Stewart. Top yeah. player on the team. Yeah. So that's where it's like, we need to get some non-players. That's yeah. why you have Mike Green. Mike Green is perfect. But he called Knicks games, but he's not biased when the Knicks play. He's not biased when the Knicks play. That bang is for everybody. I don't think that's a pause, no diddy moment there, bro. Okay, sir. That bang? Never mind. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. That just sounds crazy. It just, I didn't say I it knew was, it was borderline crazy, but I, I was like, I'm, I'm rocking with it. I didn't say nothing. Anyway, um, yeah, no, this has been a great women's basketball season, bro. Uh, um, Heading into what's going to be an even better WME season, in my opinion. Mm. I don't want to say even better because that's a that's a tough standard to, to try and surpass. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, the youngest the youngest got it, bro. The youngest got it, bro. These kids got it. And I say kids as in college kids. Like I know that they're adults, but listen, man, the game is on them, bro. Um, because I guess I don't know, but the tournament is parody. There, you know, it's like in the W, you have your I don't say stat teams, but you have your teams with like multiple all stars on them. And then you have your teams that are trying to rebuild, and it's like it's like on a random Tuesday you'll see the Liberty against the Sky. And you watched Iowa versus Purdue this year. You said that watched Iowa versus Purdue this year. Yeah. Actually, exactly. I actually, actually did. Name a player for Purdue right now. Zachy. <laughs> The girls' game, bro. You're wild, bro. You knew what I was talking about too. You're wild. Uh You're no, wild. but I did. I, I that was one of the games I was able to tap into. That was I forgot to catch my peacock because she's been reading this description. This man already worried. <laughs> but I I was watching. Well, I watched a little bit of that game because I remember they had like a donation bucket. It was like who's the best college basketball player, Caitlin Clark or Zach Eady, and there was. All the donations went into Caitlin Clark and none went into Zach Each Bucket. And this is at Purdue. So name a player. If he was locked in, name a player. I'm not I wasn't that locked in. I'm just saying. Like, because I, you wanna know what's funny? Today. I talked about this team earlier in the season. I talked about that they had three sets of sisters. You can't even name one. And don't look it up either. He's cheating. He's looking it up. Stop looking it up, bro. Stop cheating. Got the Harper sisters. He said that like he knew them. That's crazy. You got you got Abby Ellis, Jayla Smith. None yeah, of those names. Reynolds. Reynolds. None of those names. My who? Humphrey Swanson. You saying these names? And none of them are ringing the bell. You said none of them are ringing the bell? Do you? You're wild, bro. You're wild. What are the sets of sisters? I've only seen one side of sisters. There's oh, the heart. I see the lady right. sisters. I see the, the lady. You got the there's, there's you two got Reynolds. Sisters. Oh, I'm seeing that now. Somebody get bruh. Somebody get bruh. I'm like, yeah, I will, I will, I will watch that game. Yeah, I remember. I remember. But if I didn't do this full time, it'd be different. 
You watched the game. I I had it on. I didn't fully watch it. That that's just my point. Like you said, I had, like, it, oh, on. I had it on. Because the way you, the way you said it was like, oh, they could be playing against this guy or something. Like last year, this guy had a good team still. Well, yeah, obviously they had Marina Mabry, Courtney Williams, and, and, and who else did they have on that team? Kalia Copper. But, like, nobody's on that team now. That's what I'm saying. Wait, you should disrespect my girl like that? That's crazy. What, the last Who? I said last year. Yeah. I talked about her every episode last year, bro. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, your most improved player candidate. Oh my gosh, what is her name? Starts with an A. What is her name? You got Dana Evans on that squad. <laughs> I really you forgot. To look her it up name. again, huh? You about to look it up again? I forgot her name, and as soon as I see it, you're as really as crazy. As soon as I see it, as soon as I say it. You're really crazy for that, bro. Like, you're wild. You don't even know where to go to the fun. She don't play for Scott no more. I'm about to say, that's a 2024 roster. Wow. You don't even know what team she's playing on this year. No, I know she don't play for them this year. And I think she's on the – is she on the uh, Storm this year? Come she's, on, on, bro. she's on a storm this year, isn't she? No, bro. No. Oh my god. Yo. Bro. <laughs> it was a big signing for this team, too. Oh man. This is crazy. This man Bryce, yo. This man is wild, bro. Alana Smith. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I told you I was gonna remember the names when I seen it, bro. Like I have been, like listen, I have her in vision. I know how she looks. Like I had like listen. You ain't know what team she played for though? She played for the Lynx now. I said you didn't know what team she played for. I know. It took you three minutes to find her. I gotta get back in W mode, bro. Man, don't make don't make us have to do a, a, a who she played for. Who she played for? Come on now, don't make us have to do it now. That's crazy. That would be crazy. Tari, just put yourself in my shoes, bro. Excuse me. I'm gonna say, just put yourself in my shoes, man. I, 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 I listen. Our right, your biggest critique of me is that I don't watch games. Right or wrong? I don't have. I don't. I didn't say it was a critique. I just. When you say stuff, then well, that's... when we talked about it, you was like, "What well, could I do better? Maybe if I yeah. watch more games, yes, yeah. then I would be better." I don't have the time to watch games sometimes. But if I had time to put my full time into this, I would know. I got a job too, bro. Our hours are different, bro. And I, I, I and I got a second job now too, bro. Like, come on, bro. When we started this, I had two jobs. And I still found time. I had two jobs when we started this. Anyway, we'll talk about this off air. But um, <laughs> this has been a good... All right. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you're about to, about to end it or not, but... No, I'm not. I was about to talk about just the season as a whole, and then we can... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, because I'll do it after. I would say this is a great season, like, the wrap-up, that time to talk. Uh, we've seen stars emerge, like, the freshman stars of Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo. First game of the season, bro. Like, my goodness, they both just was... I mean, and, and Malady for Wiley, too. Like, that was, a, that was a great day. That first day of the season, game in Paris, uh, game, the game in Vegas... Um, interesting. That was an interesting start for the season for for LSU. Be that they lost Ooh. a lot in that game. Um, yeah, we see stars emerge. Uh, we was able to see legends be be made, and Caitlin Clark, you know, submitting her legacy this season. Um, regardless of having a ring or not, bro, I she goes down as one of the greatest basketball players to touch the basketball. 
greatest college basketball players touch the basketball. Um, you're gonna talk about Kevin Clark for a long time, and what she's done especially, with the game, especially since we get to watch her play in like a month. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, and then uh, that'll never not get seen no. some. Great performances all season, like Juju's fifty one ball against Stanford on the road. I need that black jersey. Um we also saw Caitlin Clark drop forty against LSU uh-huh. in the I think when you drop points like that, like big performances on big games like that, like that's just you just a different breed there, bro. Dropping forty in an Elite Eight. Like you can't, you can't hit on that. You can't talk down on that. Like you can't downplay that, bro. Like that's that's tough. Like with the circumstances, bro, that's tough. Um, you know, Paige reminded folks of who she was this season, which I'm glad at. Um, part of me is glad that she's coming back for another year. Part of me is just like, man, just go to the league. But I get it. Um. Yeah, overall, it's just been a great season, man. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I have more in this. I think I might write something. Write something about the season. Yeah, for me, um, I mood, I mean. I'll go. go ahead. For me, uh, some of my favorite things about this season, um, it's just kind of like last year. I was watching a lot of games, but I wasn't really like invested in anybody you know i don't want to say not like i didn't care but i was just watching the games to watch the games this year i was like there's gonna be teams that i'm gonna like focus on a little bit more um outside of like you know the top top teams that you know always have like super like big games so obviously we have like the jujus and stuff like that but like um tahina fitting in like perfectly with South Carolina it was like a really big thing for me to see, you know, cheering or watching her for Oregon, you know, as players started to leave the program and that team start to dwindle down and her having to do with injuries and things like that. Um, so to see her come in and contribute the way she did to a national championship was one of the best parts of the season for me. Maddie Westbell's growth, uh, watching Kansas State and Iowa State um, get better as the season went on. Um, Audie Crooks, Emily Ryan, Addie Brown for Iowa State, and then uh, Serena Sundell, the Glenn sisters, Ioka Lee, Gabby Gregory, like that whole that whole starting lineup, they played so well throughout the season, even when Ioka Lee went down. Lauren Betts in UCLA, um, the way they started out the season, um, you know, even when Lauren Betts went down for a little bit, they're able to, you know, keep it, keep the ship sailing. And then when she came back, they were able to get back to it. Um, Liz and Georgia, um, this was a, a very important season for them, I feel like, for yeah. both individual and for the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming back after going to a Final Four. Um, and obviously their season got cut short due to Liz's injury. At least I believe so. Um but they definitely put Virginia Tech in a place where they hadn't seen in a long time in women's college basketball. Um, they're just – they were a really fun duo to watch play basketball together and off the court. Um, Rakia, watching her at Tennessee, um, we didn't get to see her a ton last year because of different reasons. But when she was on the court last year, her and Jordan Horston were a very, very deadly duo, like a, a duo you didn't want to see. Um, they were so they were so good that they beat um, South Carolina in the SEC tournament last year. So, um, really good team, really good player. Um, Rakia just continued to show all season long. She was one of the best players in the country um, in terms of her skill and her talent. She, the 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 ceiling is through the roof. I don't even I don't even know if there's a ceiling for her. She's she's got so many tools to her game, and she can still get so much better. So, she's gonna be great. Oregon State. Um, seeing them kind of come out of nowhere and just really shock the Pac-12. Um, 
Talia, Reagan Beers, Tamia Gardner, um, Donovan Hunter, AJ Marat, like just to see that whole team just continue to get better game after game, um, get themselves to an elite eight, um, have a chance against a team like South Carolina. That's a huge, huge um, accomplishment for them. If they, if you would have told them that in the beginning of the season, like, hey, you're going to get to Elite Eight, um, you're going to be really good in the Pac-12 this year, you're going to get to Elite Eight, you're going to play South Carolina really well. I think they would have took that. I think they would have been surprised by that, and they would have said, yeah, we're taking that. Um, Ohio State, a um, bit of a disappointing finish, but after that, fir- after those first few games, they really turned it up. They really found a way to, to play together. Um they were really fun to watch when they when they started to get it going. Um, obviously, the the Duke loss was a little bit disappointing for them. Um, you know, having that lead that they had and let Duke come back and just the offense just sputtering, or yeah, uh, in the second half just couldn't really find anything. But Jason Sheldon had a hell of a career. Um, Celeste Taylor had a hell of a career. Cody Man's going to keep getting better, um, and I'm sure there's going to be players that want to play with her um, for the rest of her career. Mar Braun. I know Minnesota didn't didn't play fantastic this year, um, and she ended up getting hurt towards the end of the season. Was able to come back for the uh, women's basketball tournament, uh, or was it NIC? I think it was the women's basketball tournament. Um, but she showed that she can score with the best players in the country. Um, Peyton Verhulst at Oklahoma won new, newcomer of the year in the Big Twelve. Uh, one of the players that I started following um, because of. Uh, the under-19 team a couple years ago, team that had Sonia Citrone and Lauren Betts, Caitlin, um, Tahina, Lauren Ware. Um, Payne Verhoes was one of those players where I was like, um, if she got a shot, she'd be able to play really well. And Oklahoma, you know, she didn't get – she didn't really get a lot of time at um, Louisville, but this this year at Oklahoma, she really got to show that she can be versatile on both sides of the basketball. And I think she'll even get better too. So um, you got Madison Booker. Um, what she did after um, Rory Harmon went down was might have been the most impressive uh, feat for a freshman um, to have to come into the the season knowing you have someone like Rory Harmon um, and players like Shaylee Gonzalez and Shay Hiley um, around you, and obviously you have players like Alia Moore too and Deanna Gaston. Um, but when you know you have a guard like um, – when you know you have a guard like Rory Harmon, a lot of pressure is off of you. And once she went down, it was either sink or swim, and it was going to be on Madison Booker. And she was able to make sure that they stayed afloat. They ended up getting a number one seed in the t- uh, tournament. Um, a really, really, really impressive season for them. Um, Cam Brink and Kiki Ariafin. Cam is Cam. Um, nothing surprising there, but Kiki Ariafin's development from this year to last year. Wow. I mean, the the step, the jump. Like, I think a lot of people that have watched her in the past knew that she would be really good, but I don't know if we saw her being this good and that soon. Um, that was just a huge jump. Uh, so shout out to her. Alyssa Pilly was fantastic at Utah. Um, John and Nikas went down early in the season um, and a lot of pressure went on Alyssa Pilly and she stepped up every single time. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at the South Carolina game, um, but she was great before that and she was great after that. Um, Jalen Sherrod, great, great season, great career. Um, very interested to see how she can fare in the WNBA. Um, as I James and NC State get to the Final Four, um, that's that was huge. I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone saw them get to the final four. I'd be surprised if anyone had them going. Um, and that's not a disrespect to them at all. It's just they were very up and down during the season. Um, when they were when they were at their best, they were one of the best teams in the country. But that that in that in the middle wasn't wasn't their best. They were losing to some teams they shouldn't have lost to. But Isaiah James went crazy in the tournament, um, and they they took care of business against the teams they needed to beat. Um, Layla Felia at um, Michigan, um, she surprised me this year. I thought she would be one of those players that was very versatile but wasn't like a big scorer. She proved me wrong this year, and 
I think she's going to continue to get even better too. Duke, um, they're do, getting Layla better. In the portal. What's up? I said before you go on to Duke, Layla Philly is just in, entered the portal. Whoa! Yeah. I was waiting for you to finish that up, so I was waiting for you to finish up so we can talk. Wow. About it. Yeah, yeah, she went to the portal. Wow, so she about to get, she about to go to whoever gets her. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all may not know her name now, but you will. We're gonna I, talk a lot about her next year. Next, I season. promise you, she, you go, she's really, really good. Um, she was, she was good next to to Nas too, but um, you know, this year playing without Nas and without a real like key, uh, key post player, um, she was, she was fantastic, um, all three levels. Um, Duke, it's gonna be great. I think they'll they'll go to a final four in the next couple of years. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Yeah. Um, Florida State, Florida State was a, had a very up and down season as well. But when they were good, they were really really fun to watch. Um, Sarah Bajetti, uh, Tania Latson, um, just a, a really fun team to watch all together. Di- uh, Deja Fair, um, shout out to her man. She third all time in women's uh, D one's women's basketball in scoring. Um, Definitely deserves her flowers. Definitely can't wait to see um, what she does in the W. I think there's a lot of teams that can use that scoring if, if they want to go that route. Um, yeah, there's probably a ton more that, that I couldn't think of when I was writing all this stuff down. But those are just the – I don't even know. That's probably like 20 things I just said um, that came to mind when I was thinking about this season and return – or not return, um, in hindsight. And then – Obviously, Paige coming back and playing the way she did um, might have been my favorite thing of the season, honestly. Just her being able to get back on the court and, and play, even if she didn't play well, just being able, just her being on the court regardless. Like, I, you know, as as hard as her and, and AZ were working that season or that off season going in, like every day you were seeing some different video or some different highlight reel of them working out in different places with different um, players and different people. Um, and then for her to get hurt right before the season, um, you know, and then obviously AZ has had her injuries last year and then tore her ACL this year. So the thing that I'm looking forward or one of the things I'm looking forward to most next year is seeing them play a healthy season together because we haven't seen it yet. And if we see it, good luck. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Ooh, what the hell? Yeah, no, good luck to, to those in front of um those that, that choose to step in front of dog on UConn next year. Same with USC and Juju. Um same with a lot of these teams, man. I just think the game's gonna continue to grow up to new heights, especially with the types of talent that we have coming in next year. Um in years afterwards, you know. Uh just a couple of big names out there, but us I mean, we know we're going to have some hidden gems or just some players that surprise us that haven't really peaked yet, but, you know, they start to find who they are in college. Um, it's just great for the game, man. The game is growing. Mm-hmm. Like, basketball in general is growing. I love, the, I, love, I love being a part of it, bro. I love being a part of the growth. I love being a part of, like, seeing it in the real time. It's amazing. Amazing thing to see, man. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we'll have a draft show for you guys uh, coming out the day of the draft that morning. Um, and then on the W Talk and NBA um, Playoff Talk, yeah. Hell yeah. It's that time, <laughs> man. It's that time. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, before we go, we need, your, we need your uh, Coach Cal um, – Reaction. I thought we was gonna get out. Cal that he needs to get better. That Kentucky needs to be better, and he packs up and goes to Arkansas for five years. Five year deal to Arkansas, and he's getting a five million dollar NIL budget too. I'm just waiting for a Drake Razorback one. Look, man. I'm not. Uh, boys I don't hate Coach Cal. Cal. Yo, so I don't know. 
I try to get Drake read the back line, but Drake is gonna have to do that. We'll we'll have to hear it from from Drake. See how it happens. They ain't even got no. They ain't even got no flavor to it. Like Razorbacks. Arkansas don't got no damn flavor to it. Shit. <laughs> um. But yeah, what is your what are your thoughts on Coach Cal to Arkansas or Kansas? Uh, Arkansas, bro. Really? Arkansas, like of all the schools, Arkansas. Like maybe he going there to try to prove a point. Like that's the only thing I can think of. Like. Like it's not like Kentucky's money wasn't was it Arkansas money. Like I think he maybe he was going there to prove a point. I don't know, man. Um, you know his coach teams that have underachieved for the last eight years. Um, I'll give him obviously the COVID year, and then I'll give him twenty seventeen. Um, uh, for that fluke ass shot that Luke May hit. But other than that, the teams were supposed to go much farther than they did and did not do that. Um, that falls on him. That falls on the players. But he brought those players in. He was supposed to have those players ready. If those players weren't ready, that's on him. You continue to bring in those types of players. Um, I respect him for all of the players that he helped get into the NBA. Um, that is, was always his, you know, his goal when he got there was to make sure that those players were set for life. When it was time for them to go, he told them to go. When he thought that they should come back to play another year, he told them to come back. He was never thinking of himself when he was thinking about this program or these the players that he was bringing in. He was always thinking about how he could get them to the next level. And we've seen those players get to the next level and excel at a at a pace that no other school has. And that's that's a fact. Um I'm not about to go into this deep spill because at the end of the day he's a grown man, he can make his own decisions. But when coaches are allowed to do stuff like this, this is why I don't have a, a problem with people transferring. Because if a coach can leave in the middle of his contract and go to an entirely different school in the same conference, mind you, same conference, mm-hmm. then why can't a player transfer when they feel like they need to? There's always a reason for why a 19-year-old or a 20-year-old can't, but a 60-year-old man that is making money off of those 19, 20-year-olds' backs Talk about it. they want whenever they want. Nick Saban, retired, probably out of nowhere. Did Do we think that those Alabama players knew that he was going to retire after this season? Probably not. He decided, hey, I'm doing this. I'm I'm done. I'm good. R- respect to it. But you can't say like, oh, this player did this. And this player just quit on us. And this player didn't want to play in this bowl game. What? After that bowl game, you're probably leaving anyway. Depending on what school you're at. That happens damn near every season. Your next job lined up. Literally. Like, look. Let me see how, how fast it happens. Like, these talks had to have been happening. Like, Coaches don't just get the job the next day. Like, no, you go through a process. You go through yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. I think of the recent, just just recently, like with CFC, Pat Kelsey. Like, as soon as they got out of the tournament, it was like a week later, he got the job at Louisville. Man, no, nobody just gets a lot about Louisville. You got to, bro, you got to go through interviews, talks. They got to make a decision. Like, yeah. his, his, his star player entered the portal. <laughs> The day before it was announced he was going to Louisville. Because he told his team, hey, I'm leaving, like, guys. You see it all the time. Players start entering the portal, and then it's like, all right, whatever. And then, damn, I don't know. Uh, Janiah Barker, if I'm saying that right, is in the portal as well. I think I saw that. Or is that just now? No, that's just now. That's, yeah. Wow. I saw her. I saw her post something. I thought I saw her post yeah, something. Yeah, it says. I thought she posted she go to the country. Barker out of Texas A and M in the transfer portal. I could have sworn I saw her post something before about going to the W, but I could be wrong. Let me look at her Instagram because I feel like I saw. Yeah, it says sources say Janai uh, Barker was Texas A&M. I guess not. I don't know why I thought she she had committed or put herself in the W. 
but that's that's a good one. That's that's a player that has a ton of potential, and if you can get that out of her, yeah, should be big. Like you really got some some players, some um some program altering like players like that can help some teams out next year. For sure. In this portal. Yeah. yeah. I mean a lot of people looked at Tahina and saw what she did and was like, oh well, I can go help a, a team that just lost. Yeah. Or that could have won that were missing one little piece. Like right. Tahina said, she was watching the final four game and was like, hey, I can help. Yeah. And that was, you know, South Carolina reached out and the rest is history. Yeah, like you think of the notable transfers, like Andrew Reese transfer, Camilla Cardoso yep. transfer, yep. Uh, Warren Betts transfer. Yep. Uh, trying to think of who else transfer is like a big part. Well, we we mentioned Tahina this year. Um, Georgia's a transfer now. Georgia's a transfer now. Yeah. Isn't Kylie Watson a transfer? Kylie Watson. Yep. Yeah. Do that Oregon. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's that's exactly right. Les Taylor. Last yeah. year. There. Yeah. Cheyenne Day Wilson. Yeah. Down in Miami now. <clears throat> yeah. Should have been twice. It's gonna be a good season next year, bro. I can't wait. Oh, Mackenzie Forbes. How can I forget? Oh yeah. <laughs> Big nice. part of USC. Caleb Padilla? Caleb Padilla. Another one. Big part of USC success this year. No, sure. it went cold in that in that UConn game, but up to that point. You didn't have to say that. I know. Interesting. It's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, for as for Kyle and them, I don't know if I'm still a Kentucky fan because I was a Kentucky fan because of John Wall, and I just stayed with the team because every year there was some someone else I could root for. Um, I've never been like a, oh, Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. Like, I didn't go to school there. Like, like I don't know. It's different because if Dabo left Clemson, I would still be a Clemson fan probably. Like, if Gino, when Gino eventually leaves UConn, I'll probably still be a UConn fan. When D-Wade left Miami, still a Heat fan. Like, but Kentucky's a little different. Like that was that was always my team in college basketball, but it was more so because of the players that were coming in than the coach or the the team at like the college itself. Yeah. So um it really like and I, I'm I'm gonna be honest, I haven't even paid that much attention, especially the last two years. Like I haven't watched them that much. So it's not like I'm like, Oh my god, I watched every single game in the last two years and he just did, like it is what it is. I'm not even surprised with most stuff at this point. Like I'm a little surprised that he went to Arkansas. Same. But like I'm not surprised that, you know, he saw something better for him. So like that's my thing. Like I thought he probably should have went thing. or went to a different type of program. Like, I yeah. don't know. There's some more yeah. like uh just well known like basketball program, like a Michigan who just got rid of um Ew. Coach Colin Yellow would be crazy. That's disgusting. Like a Michigan who just got with a Juwan Howard or I'm trying to think of whatever college basketball positions open up. Yeah. Definitely not Arkansas. I was definitely tripping a lot the other night whenever that news came across. Yeah, Arkansas is loud, bro. That was what, late Sunday? We yeah. drove through Arkansas when I was a kid. It was like nothing there. Good Maybe it's just because I was a kid. But I was like, bro, I ain't nothing out here, bro. It's just hot. And this is when I was like watching like SEC football too when I was watching like Ryan Mellon and I was like, man. Huh? I said, dang, yeah. They had him. Uh, his name Joe Adams. Greg Childs. Joe Adams had that crazy punt return for Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah, Darren McFadden. Mm-hmm. DJ, uh, I forgot what his name. The tight end. But it's whatever. It don't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, it's just it, my only thing on this whole thing is like, if coaches are allowed to do that, the transfer portal talk needs to stop. Like, I'm so tired of hearing like, oh, the transfer portal this, transfer portal that. Coaches can up and leave whenever they want. They can find a better spot for themselves. They can, they can go to a better place for them. 
but a, but a 19 to 20 year old can't. I'm just I'm so tired of that conversation. So this just goes to show, like any coach can get up and leave at any time. So so can a player. That's my take. Facts, man. Let the, hey, let the trans, let the kids transfer. That's why the portal is there. I understand it gets ridiculous at times. You have hundreds of kids in the transfer portal, but at the same time, it's and like, it's it's on them. Like if they fail, they fail. Yeah, like and wow. some people. It's just a new age that we're getting into with basketball. Like either you, you know, you stick with it, or like you know, you you find out like. You change with the times or you get lapsed. And we've seen how that's happened to certain coaches. Seen how certain coaches that talk bad about NIL, that talk bad about the transfer portal, and they, use they aren't good because they're not good at trans, like they're still stuck in their old ways. Like, no. Dabo. Yeah, I was trying not to say names here, but Dabo. I knew you was going. I'll I, say it. I threw the alley. I threw the alley for you. You know, through the legs. Behind the back, like like Jamal Crawford, the Blake Griffin, through the alley there for you. Yeah, it's that one hundred percent. Yeah, but anyways, man, it's gonna be an interesting season next season, bro. Uh, looking forward to the W season this season, which is gonna be amazing. Got Olympic season too. Yeah, a couple so, gold medals. Yeah, a lot, a lot going on there, man. You know, Ace is gonna come back. They're gonna try to go for that number three in a row. Liberty ain't gonna have something to say about about it though. You got other teams loading up. Phoenix, Seattle, Connecticut. Alyssa Thomas wasn't very happy with uh her girl Dijon. Oh no, nah, yeah. Listen, bro. Nah, I'm just kidding. That one, it wasn't. Even good. It's 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 the revenge season for Alyssa Thomas, bro. Like we say that every year, bro. I know, but I think this year. It is more than other years because she got snubbed at MVP like she did. Like oh, she the, definitely did get snubbed, but yeah, like I thought you meant like as in she needed to get that chip. I'm about to say, boy, they get oh, close. Uh, uh, no, 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 yeah, no. but I'm saying like she, the, the league going to feel 25. Yeah, but anyways, man, thank y'all for tuning us in our episode. I know it's another long one, but y'all be all right. Yeah. Y'all tune into the long ones anyway. Like, Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in, though. We we'll back next week. Talk NBA. Uh, not NBA. Whoa. WME Draft. But we'll be back NBA too, though. Maybe. We'll see. We're not talking playoffs? Oh, oh, oh. Playoffs do start soon. I'm tripping. Bro, the last week of the season is this week. What? <laughs> It's April for real, for real. I forgot playoffs. Last week of the season. Literally, Sunday is the forget, last day. I forget April is like when the playoffs start. Most teams have three games left. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's getting to that time. And there's a game. There, every, almost every team plays tonight. There's 14 games tonight. Because there was no games last night. And then I think there's like one or two on Wednesday. Yeah. I was mad because it just started the championship uh, game or championship week in uh, Drew's League. I'm trying to get to this bread, bro. So, there, everybody, almost everybody plays today. Tomorrow, there's a couple of games. Then Thursday, no, is it Friday? Friday, damn near everybody plays. And then Sunday, I'm assuming everybody plays. Because there's no games on Saturday. And then everybody plays on Sunday. So Friday, Sunday, and today, for the NBA basketball, I will I will lock back in. I've been watching, depending on what's going on, but I will mm-hmm. I will be locked back into to NBA for this last weekend for the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, didn't even know it was last week. Yep. Tripping, bro. Like I said, I've been in. I've been locked in on college past. You know, that's it, man. That's it. No, facts. The, next ain't, the next ain't knowing nothing, so I ain't really been having a reason to be. Them boys cheeks, boy. That shit crazy. Eliminated from playoff contention. I did not think it was going to be that bad, bro. I thought they would be at least a play in, bro. But they're really that bad. And they don't have a draft pick. All right, yeah. We got to get up out of here because that's sad. We almost cry for you. I know. Anyway, man, thank you for tuning in, bro. We'll be out next week, bro. Appreciate y'all.